Remember yesterday we talked about how, um, if you look back at our definition of rational numbers, any number that can be written as a over b, where a and b are integers, and b cannot equal zero. So today, excuse me, we're going to talk about fractions and how we can write division as a fraction, because that's the whole meaning of a rational number, right? I can write that division as a fraction. So we're going to do this on the bottom of page 10. If you don't have enough space, okay, you can do it on page 11. Page 11, we're going to do a different title, but if you need to spill over, remember, y'all are getting to that practice of, hey, how do I organize my notebook, right? So take care of that. So let's write down the situation. So I'm going to write down about Abby and three friends. And how they share six bags of candy. Abby and three friends share six bags of candy. Now, once we start thinking about this, we already can kind of start painting the scenario in our head, right? We already know there's this many people. We already know that they're splitting this item or this number. And so that's what we're kind of thinking about. Okay. So let's look at this. It says Abby and three friends are sharing six bags of candy. Let me hear from let me hear from Mona. Go ahead and unmute your mic. Mona, what are we doing in this problem? Am I how, well? Let's tell me this. How many friends are we sharing with? You can unmute and share. Four friends. Four friends, right? So we have four friends, Mona, and they're sharing six bags of candy. So what are we going to write down for this problem? Are we going to do, well, we know sharing is division, right? We're splitting it with the, within those numbers. Am I going to take four and divide it by six or six divided by four? Awesome. We're going to do 6 divided by 4. We do 6 divided by 4 because we're taking 6 bags of candy and splitting with 4 groups. Now here's the thing. We don't always do the bigger number first. It could be the other way around. It could be if I had a different scenario. Let's say 4 friends share 2 bags of candy. In that case, you're getting a smaller number first. 2 divided by 4. So just kind of keep in mind that we see all those different types of numbers and scenarios. Okay? Awesome. Thank you for sharing, Mona. So if I do 6 divided by 4, another way to think about this is a fraction. I can write 6 divided by 4 as 6 over 4. I can write the same problem as 6 over 4. So when I think about it as 6 over 4, again, it's just another way to represent our division. Now, 6 over 4, remember from our fractions uh, from back then about it being an improper fraction, right? The top or numerator is bigger than the bottom. So I want to make sure that I either simplify it, convert it to a mixed number, however you want. Now, there's a couple of different ways we can do that. But if I think about 6 over 4, I can take out one whole from this number. So think about 6 minus 4. I can subtract it one time, and I'll have 2 out of 4 left over. So 1 and 2 fourths. If I simplify 2 over 4, we can divide both of those by 2. And we will get that each friend gets 1 and a half bags of candy. Okay. Let's kind of look at the 6. Uh, divided by 4, right? Let's kind of work that out so you can kind of see why it works that way and how it makes sense. So another way to think about it, just like our do not put the first number on the inside and second number on the outside of the house, okay? Your dividend and your divisor, whatever cutesy way you want to think about it. So when I do 4 and a 6, kind of like Shalok mentioned this morning, um, we think about it. 4 can go to 6 only one time. 
And notice we get two. Now in 68, we're not going to say, oh, Mr. Daniel, uh, I, I have a remainder. My answer is one remainder two. No, it doesn't work that way. And do not tell me, oh, my answer is 1.2, because that's not how decimals work, okay? So just like Shalok said, and from the video, if you watched it, and if you didn't, you have one more day to complete it. We had a decimal, a zero, and we keep going. We had a decimal and a zero, and we keep going. Because six is the same as 6.0. Six is the same as 6.00. 6.000 is the same as six, right? I can add as many zeros as I want. Four goes into 20, a complete five times, and it terminates. This is, so you could also say 1.5 bags. Now, if you were converting it to the mixed number, you could just get that two by subtracting four however many times. Or if you look at that remainder of two, that's where that would go. Okay, I wouldn't worry way too much about the conversion of that to a mixed number. We'll do like a whole unit on that, you know, and it's in that video. Uh, it does touch up on that. But this is something you do need to know, right? How do I divide when, you know, it's past a remainder? So if you can't do that, okay, make a note. Come to tutorials, write down a note to yourself. Go to tutorials and ask Mr. Daniel, yada, 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 okay? Now, I can do this A over B form. This whole process is A over B form. Right? Think about it as writing something like a fraction. And I can do it with all my rational numbers. Let's read the definition. It says any number that can be written as a over b, where a and b are both integers, and b cannot equal 0. Now the reason we don't put b as 0 is because if we put b as 0, um, it's, we can't divide by 0, right? It's just not possible. So for example, okay, I'm going to pull up my phone on my screen instead of going back and forth if I took 25 and divided it by 0 if you put it on any calculator anything like that if you put it equal it would always give you an error okay I want you to think about it as for example if you said hey I'm gonna share my bag of candy with zero people okay so who's gonna get candy no one's gonna get any candy right so it's like your one bag of candy divided by no one you can't even do the process of oh you get two pieces you get no you can't even do that so there's no division going on. That's why it's an error. So we never can divide by zero. And we'll talk again more about that as we kind of go through the unit. But we can never, ever divide by zero. But according to this rule of rational numbers, it says that any rational number can be written as A over B. So let's look at this first example. Let's say the number 16. Let's say I have the number 16. Now, I want to be able to write as A over B because I know it's a rational number. Because I know it's a natural number, it's in that bubble, so that means it's also a whole number, also integer, also irrational. So when we write it, we want to think about, well, what could I divide 16 by to keep it the same? Okay, use the raise your hand feature. What's something I could divide 16 by to keep it the same and not change the value? Okay, think about it, don't overthink it, right? What's a number I could divide 16 by to keep it the same? Don't be shy, guys. Any takers? What can I divide 16 by to keep it the same? I know. Okay, Sherlock, what's up? Tell me. Um, I think it's 1. It's 1. Because if you do, yeah, 1 times, one times 16 is 16, so it's the same value. Exactly. So I can keep it exactly the same. So I could put 16 over 1, because that's just like 16 divided by 1. So notice, hey, I can write it as A over B. So if I can write it as A over B, then it counts as a rational number. It's possible. Now, if you think about it, I can do it with so many numbers, right? And that's the thing with it. I can definitely um, set it up that way, right? You want to think about it as, oh, there is so many different ways that I can write different numbers as A over B. And that's why it's so interesting that all these numbers could be rational. Let's take another one. So let's take, for example, negative 27. Now again, even if it's an integer, we can do the exact same process to it. Okay? So let me hear from... Bum, ba, da, bum, making sure we're live, awake, and good morning. Uh, let me hear from 
Tareem, Tareem, go ahead and share with us what can we divide any number by to keep it the same? We kind of already mentioned it, but what can we divide any number by to keep it the same? One, right? I can always, always divide it by one. So I can write this as a negative 27 divided by one, just like that. So I can write it as A over B, so yes, it's a rational number. If you can write, so I could pretty much divide everything by one, right? At least in our world of numbers. There's a whole other world of numbers we're not going to even talk about, it, okay? But I can write that, write this as A over B, okay? And that's something I want to make sure that if I can write it that way, it counts as a rational number. All right, so let's think about a, another one. So we'll do two more examples on this bottom part. We'll do two more examples and then we'll do an activity. Number three, let's take for example... 0 and 15 hundredths. All right, so let's see, because if we did our notes, we should know how to write this as a fraction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let me hear from Samuel. Samuel, go ahead and share with this team. How can I write 0 and 15 hundredths as a decimal? Um, I joined quite late. Okay, it's okay, no worries. And so we're just, we're going over our notes. This is from our asynchronous activity. Did you get a chance to do the asynchronous notes yet or no? I, I've done it uh, when we were at the number two. I'm, I'm talking about the other, like the activity that was uh, in school. No. Not a chance yet? Okay. All right. No worries. Thanks for being honest. All right. Let's go another round. Okay. Because see, like I said, because you're not the only one, Sam. I'll tell you right now, I'm looking and seeing who all already submitted and who has not submitted. So, okay. Yes, yes. Well, we were supposed to finish by Thursday. Mm, that's what I said. It says it on and the folder too. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, uh, Alyssa. Uh, Alyssa, go ahead and share. What would I do for 0 and 1500? How would I write that as a fraction? What do you think? Alyssa. Yes. Um, between the six and the four, what is that symbol? That's a division symbol. Division. Okay, thank you. Right. Alyssa, are you here this morning? Miss, uh, Mr. Daniel. Okay, you can type in the chat, Alyssa. Yeah, Alyssa said I can't unmute. It's lagging a lot. Okay, okay, no worries. Okay, Alyssa, you can type in the chat. How would I write 15 hundredths as a fraction? What do you think? You can use a little slash symbol on there. Oh, you know what? Okay, that's okay. Mm. Let me see if she might be joining in and coming back in. That is okay. All right. For the sake of time, we're going to go ahead and keep moving then, okay? Now, again, this is straight from our notes, guys. That's why I said, I said Monday, I said Tuesday, everything else in between. All right. Mustafa, go ahead and share with us. So, um, you can do 15. Uh-huh. Turn it into 1,500 because it's in the, the five is in the hundred place. Fantastic, sir. Thank you so much. Let's stop one of my people because I'm looking at my list. He's one of my people that, you know, did his work. So, watching that video for sure. All right, I got to stop it, right? Okay. So, that's definitely something you got to make sure you do. If you have yet to do that, okay, like, yeah, I did have to stop and do it. Thank you. Again, you should have watched it. Okay, so, again, we're going to move on with it, okay, because I can spend all period talking about it. I can simplify that to 3 twentieths. Awesome. Our last one is going to be number four, and then we're going to do an activity. Number four, let's say I took seven and one half, right, seven and a half. Now, in the video, they talked about converting these mixed numbers into improper fractions. 
Now, another way I can convert seven and a half into an improper fraction, they talked about you know, a different way. Multiply denominator by the whole number, whole number by the numerator, okay? My cutesy way to call it is a Texas method. Because you put, well not the letter, you put the two symbols as addition and multiplication, right? So TX looks like the you know, initials for Texas. That's how I think about it. So I do two times seven, which is 14. 14 plus one gets me 15. 15 out of two. So 15, and then my denominator is two. So I can write a mixed number as an improper fraction, because a fraction is A over B. Improper fraction is also A over B. So you want to make sure, again, these two questions, if you're not ready for that, you're going to be behind on Tuesday. And I will not take any class time teaching how to do that. This is already in Schoology, that video is there, and the notes are there for you to work on. Okay, so you got to make sure you take care of that.